On the one hand, it takes no time for someone to pass a remark on a person with depression. And on the other, for clinicians, it takes so much time to conclude a diagnosis for which they are trained for years. What do you think about having skills for measuring depression? Can we really measure depression? For those who are new to my channel, hi, my name is Linda Shok and you are watching Mastermind. decided to study psychology I have had no moment of regret but this renewed sense of being every time I learn about how mental health doctors therapists researchers and academicians are developing measures for more accurate and custom treatments for people with mental health issues it gives me literally goosebumps to think of being a part of this mental health care community and someday be able to unburden these people with mental health issues with proper diagnosis and treatment. So talking about scales of depression. Yes, psychology is science and science cannot do away with measurements. And so these scales designed to gauge the severity and nature of depressive symptoms are integral for diagnosis, research, and monitoring treatment efficacy. I will not dive too deep uh, into the design of its scale, but I give you an overview of the 10 most widely used scales in the room of depression so that you aren't bored, but yet derive some information for your knowledge. Beck Depression Inventory, BDI. Developed by Dr. Aaron T. Beck, the BDI is a 21-item self-report scale that assesses the severity of depression in adults and adolescents. It is known for its simplicity and is widely used in both clinical and research settings. Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, HAMD. The Hamilton Rating Scale for Depression, abbreviated as HDRS, HRSD, or HAMD, measures depression in individuals before, during, and after treatment. The scale is administered by healthcare professionals and contains 21 items, but is scored based on the first 17 items, which are measured either on a 5-point or 3-point scale. Patient Healthcare Questionnaire or PHQ-9 The Patient Healthcare Questionnaire PHQ-9 is a self-report measure designed to screen depressive symptoms. It takes one to five minutes to complete and roughly the same amount of time for the clinician to review the responses. The PHQ-9 is available in multiple languages. Montgomery Asborough Depression Rating Scale in ADRS a clinician-rated scale, the MADRS, comprises 10 items, each rated on a 7-point scale. It's designed to be sensitive to changes in symptom severity, making it particularly useful for assessing the efficacy of antidepressant treatments. Social Problem Solving Inventory, Revised SPSI RTM the Social Problem Solving Inventory Revised SPSI RTM is a self-report measure of social problem solving strengths and weaknesses in individuals 13 years old and older. The revised version has both a 52 long form and 25 short form questions. Geriatric Depression Scale GDS Tailored specifically for older adults, the GDS is a self-report scale available in both short-form 15 items and long-form 30 items versions. It focuses on the mood-related signs of depressions, intentionally excluding somatic symptoms. Children's Depression Inventory, CDI. As the name suggests, this self-report scale is designed for school-aged children and adolescents. It's useful for assessing signs of depression in younger populations, covering areas like mood, interpersonal relationships, and performance at school. The Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale, EPDS. 
especially designed for postnatal depression this 10 item self-report scale helps to identify women who may be suffering from postpartum depression it's beneficial for its focus on this particular and significant life phase quick inventory of depressive symptomatology that is QIDS available in both clinician rated and self-report formats the QIDS evaluates nine domains of depressive symptomatology it is recognized for its ability to detect symptom changes over time bipolar depression rating scale that is BDRS Tailored for bipolar disorder, the BDRS assesses the symptoms of depression specifically within the context of this condition. It considers the unique manifestations of depression that appear in bipolar disorder, differentiating it from unipolar depression. By now, it is clear to you that it is not as easy as calling someone a little bit or very much depressed. By the way, do check my shorts on the difference between depressed and depression. Also, the scales I discussed today aren't exhaustive. There are many more scales. So moving on, these scales of depression play a pivotal role in research diagnosis and treatment monitoring, and they form a part of a broader clinical assessment process in which an individual's history, context, and comprehensive evaluation are all taken into consideration. Now, if you would like me to study more and bring to you more invaluable insights from the world of mental health, consider subscribing to this channel. My hours of hard work would feel duly compensated with your love and encouragement through comments, shares, and like. Until next, only trust a clinician to measure your depression and no one else. Thank you and take care.